and let us all that we can to build a better future. On yesterday's show, we talked about Dr. Cornell West abandoning, leaving the Green Party. Now, that was breaking news for Hard Lens Media. We addressed it early in the morning, and I saw all of my colleagues in independent media give their thoughts on it, their commentary, their analysis. I want to give a huge special shout out to uh, CJ uh, from Revolutionary Blackout Network, who did a phenomenal breakdown of it. And I just want to talk about the aftermath of the fact that Dr. Cornell West left the Green Party. And I believe now that there are some questions that need to be brought up. The Peter Dow effect, which is something that something that I think is severely impacting this campaign. Now, again, he's Peter Dow has done a lot of interviews or three interviews so far uh, with a couple of people, Tim Black, uh, Sabrina, and of course, uh, Brianna Joy Gray. However, uh, I have expressed my concerns about Peter Dow being a campaign manager and now leaving the Green Party and observing some, well, questionable statements from a co-chair from the Green Party, as well as the fact that the Green Party seems to be an, an, a complete and utter disaster. It leads me to wonder, were we being screwed around from the very beginning? Uh, just truly how incompetent is the Green Party when it comes down to uh, organizing or trying to get their candidates out there? And then finally, what is the overall goal of Dr. Cornell West now running as an independent? Because we need to talk about the idea of abolishing political parties, which is something I agree with entirely. Yes, we should abolish all political parties. However, we are not at that threshold yet. And there is a benefit of being attached to a political party, and that is having ballot accessibility. As it stands right now, the Greens have around 18, possibly 20 states in which they have ballot access. The Libertarians, far much more. Running as an independent, though, while on paper that does sound good, and in some states they are a little bit more lenient, I know in my state in Illinois, because I spoke to non-affiliate candidates who are running as independents, not associated with Greens or Libertarians, and it is exponentially hard, no matter what office you are running for, to secure ballot access. Now, you might say you might need less signatures, but in my state, in Illinois... We are very, very draconian. We are very, very strict. And I'm only speaking for Illinois. I'm not going to speak for any other state. But if maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 other states are on par with how Illinois treats third parties or independents than Dr. Cornell West. And yes, even RFK Jr., if they're running as non-affiliate, are going to have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations for ballot accessibility. And I hope that Peter Dow understands this. If not, then <laughs> I got to say uh, the Peter Dow effect is a can you have him on board and the campaign starts to sink to the bottom of the ocean and it'll upload faster than the Titan submarine. Yeah, I said that. So let's get started. I want to pull up this interview. Shout out again to Case Study QB. Please be sure to follow him on Twitter. Dr. Cornell West gives his commentary uh, about why he left the Green Party, why he dropped the Green Party, and is running as independent on CNN. So let's play this video. Progressive presidential candidate Dr. Cornell West is changing lanes again in his bid for the White House. He announced today that he will no longer seek the Green Party's nomination and instead is going to run as an independent. It was just, of course, a few months ago that Dr. West left a lesser known liberal group to join the Green Party to run for that ticket. He defended his quest for the White House amid criticism from Democrats and many of President Biden's allies that his run could tip the election to potentially Donald Trump if he's the GOP nominee. Dr. Cornell West is back here with me. Welcome back to The Source. Oh, Thank it's you. a blessing to be here. Thank and you again, for being here. salute you and the work you're doing. Thank you very much. We had you on the first week of the show. Absolutely. Tell me why you made this move and you're going to run as an independent now. Well, I'm thoroughly convinced that we're at such a low level in the history of the country with the spiritual decay and moral decadence, political paralysis, the corporate greed, suppressions, so many ways of UAW workers and now healthcare workers. We have to raise our voices in a serious way. And I'm thoroughly convinced that both parties are beyond redemption. 
they're almost like plantations. The Green Party is a progressive party, and I was so glad that Sister Jill Stein and my dear brother, Jamu Baraka, came in and allowed me to be a, become a part of that process. But I discovered that, lo and behold, even there, there are certain impediments. And you see... He'll be too polite, but I will just rip the Band-Aid off when it comes down to the Green Party. And look, I only say this out of love to the Greens because I'd be saying the same thing, too, if the Libertarians were like this. And no, they're not. To the Libertarians' credit, in the past election cycles, they've been able to secure more votes. And from my observations of starting Hard Lens Media, um, I've been impressed with at least the actions of the Illinois Libertarian Party to getting their candidates on the ballot. I may not agree with a lot of their policy issues or politics, but I do respect organization and people able to, able to implement the goals that they set out to achieve. The Green Party, I'm only going to speak for what I've covered in Illinois and to an extent in Indiana. It's been an utter disaster. At one point, the Illinois Green Party was recognized as a legitimate party in the state of Illinois. They crapped the bed. And they lost that legitimacy. I don't know how you could pull that off, but they did it, which is an utter embarrassment. Now, again, in my state, there's a lot of rules and regulations that are designed to suppress third parties. So not all of it's their fault, but eternal vigilance is key. And I do encourage that vigilance to uh, be intensified for the libertarians that have secured themselves to be in other states. But nonetheless, the Green Party is terribly unorganized. Um, they lost an opportunity in 2016 for real effective change and restructuring their power. And I know my colleague Daniel and I, we have observed this firsthand here in Illinois and Indiana. It's been nothing but lackluster and mediocre, unimpressive. And that is me being polite here. Now, I would like to say that the Greens should get their act together, that maybe new people coming in and organizing it is what's key. But with this happening and Cornell West leaving, I do have a big question. Where is Chris Hedges? Chris Hedges, if memory serves me right, was at an event with Kasama Sawant and a few other activists and organizers. And Indie News Left was actually there on the ground and covered it. And captured on film where Chris Hedges was saying that he was talking to Dr. Cornell West of getting him out of the People's Party and into the Green Party. Where is Chris and what is going on? Again, we will be talking about the infighting and mess that's in the Green Party and really maybe how much of a cesspool disaster it truly is. Sister Caitlin, I, I really am a jazz man in the life of the mind and the world of politics, which means that it's difficult to play in a party band. It's difficult to, to have to deal with those constraints. What do you and mean all. impediments? The impediments having right. to do with, with first is a long nomination process. You got a number of different uh, appearances you have to make. You have to make your case. And I understand that democratic process. Well, yes, that's that's the whole thing about a nomination process. I mean, even the libertarians got one, too, you know. So, but you've got a strong name and a strong following that shouldn't hinder you too much. But again, I'm wondering who, who, again, I have to look back at that Jimmy Dore interview and I have to wonder, I have to wonder besides Dow, who else is advising you to be making these decisions? Questions upon questions. But when it becomes so internal that I don't have time to focus on the pain and the social misery of the people. But do you worry it complicates your your bid for the White House? Because if you did run as the Green Party nominee, you know, you're on the ballot in I think 20 or so states. Now you've got to raise a lot of money, have this this effort to get your name on the ballots, which, you know, as well as I do, it requires tens of thousands of signatures. Well, my Green Party brothers and sisters have 18 states. I'm glad he brought that up. This is from the Green Party. All right. Ballot access is only for the Green Party. Uh, my state is in the shade of not yet uh, on the ballot in 2024. So the Greens got California, Oregon, Montana, Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, South and North Carolina, West Virginia. Again, uh, we got Wisconsin, Michigan and uh, Maine as well. So, yes, these are the things. And also Delaware and oh, hey, Washington, D.C. 
So those are the states. Um, South Dakota, uh, building Green Party in process, and ballot access, uh, legal action, Indiana, Kansas, Oklahoma, and New York State. That's it. That's it. Um, as an independent, you got to start from the bottom. And again, I've brought this up on my on uh, on the show numerous times. Illinois is extremely, extremely draconian. They are very harsh. The rules are there to prevent third parties and independents from being on the ballot, being on the debate stage. If you go back to the very beginning of Hardland's media, we interviewed libertarians and greens. When we had our radio show, we interviewed them and talked about securing ballot signatures. Illinois, and then again, this is just my state. There are people who are in charge who look at the signatures. If there is anything wrong with said signature and address, they throw it out. That's how they operate. Republicans and Democrats who are running for office don't have that problem. Third parties and independents do, and it's up to 11. Let's continue on with the rest of the video. So we still had 32. And the two-party system, the corporate duopoly, is just so unjust in terms of making it difficult for any independent party. And that shows you the way in which they want to reproduce the status quo. Now, I've got 50, but it's easier as an independent to gain access to the ballot than it is to be part of a third party, you see. And so we've got folk on the ground, operations on the ground. I've got an organizational genius in my dear brother, Peter Dow, and magnificent high quality. The fact that he is praising Peter Dow, the same Peter Dow who was with the Hillary Clinton campaign in 2016, who is an instrument in smearing progressives and independents. Dr. Cornell West, listen, you're very smart. I respect you, okay? But you're not very good at politicking right now, and you're looking very indecisive here. And when you start giving praise to something like Peter Dow, and look, I get it. I get it. He said he changed. But I have a hard time believing it, okay? And I know a lot of you who are watching this have a hard time believing in Peter Dow's 180. His 180 looks like a 360, but that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Maybe he truly did change, but we cannot forget his actions in 2016 and what he did to progressives and independents and how with the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party and corporate media, how all Bernie Sanders supporters, no thanks to Bernie Sanders defending us, uh, were smeared as white supremacists. So that's right. If you were black, Latino, Asian, if you were a woman, guess what? You all became straight white males. Bernie bros. Remember that? Remember that? The God Emperor of Mankind remembers. Petridge Farm remembers. And I'm sure all of you remember. Hell, even Catelyn Collins remembers. All of the team, and we're hitting the ground running, and we're going to be in at least 35 or 40 states. Did you hear anything from anyone in the White House or the Biden campaign or, or any of President Biden's associates about this move? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, if that's the case... And I know Dr. West is watching the news. He is afraid of Donald Trump. He mentioned that in the uh, Jimmy Dore interview, concerned about it. And polling data is showing that if you add in a third party candidate or even Dr. West's name in there as well. Trump does beat Biden. OK, the evidence is there. But again. People need to stop with this whole idea that third parties are going to spoil the election. You can't spoil something that's already rotten. And my vote and your vote are not entitled to one candidate. It is yours to give freely of your choice. And you also have the choice not to vote too. And you can't let fear get the better of you. I am not afraid of a second Trump presidency. What I am fearful of is people losing their ability to think critically. And that is becoming abundantly clear with every passing day. So many people triggered by Trump. So many people triggered by the two-party system. So many people unable to see the fact that these bastards in D.C. are screwing us over. I would expect more from Dr. West. But maybe he's letting the fear of a Trump presidency get the better of him or maybe vilified like how Dr. Jill Stein was or like how Ralph Nader was. 
You have to be the you have to have the ability to be a spirit, not a ghost. And I do question the advisement of Peter Dow and just how strong the Dow effect is. And we want to continue to put some fear into them because, see, when you speak to the greed of Wall Street, when you really speak to the military adventurism and the possibility of a World War III with the United States and the Russian Federation mediated with that ugly, ugly suffering of our precious Ukrainian brothers and sisters, when you really speak to the mass incarceration, the plight of those in the hoods and barrios and the reservations, poor white folk, poor working people across the board, that puts fear in the status quo. Both Democrats and Republicans are both from tied to Wall Street. I don't know, because we got to keep in mind, you know, again, things are in such flux, my dear sister. Biden might not even be the candidate. He's running out of gas. Trump may be either in jail or on the way to jail. We don't know. We got a whole year. I have to be true to my calling and I have to be consistent. And most importantly, I want to try to be an example. As fallible as I am, I want to be an example of a quest for integrity, honesty and decency in a moment where there's so much hatred and greed and revenge. Given you Now, I do want to again bring this up here as well. This is the ballot access that the Greens currently have. I'm surprised they have as many states as they do, but we do have to address the Dow effect. So again, huge shout out to Compton J. He has uh, really brought out the fact uh, and did uh, some great breakdowns, especially on Twitter. Weston Dow, not a good sign when the head Democrat shill Ryan Grimm calls your move good for Democrats. In which Ryan Grimm tweeted out, Dr. Cornell West, after leaving the People's Party, is now leaving the Green Party, pledging to run as an independent. Probably good news for Democrats as he's unlikely to be on the ballot in some states. And yes, that is the case. Uh, Again, over here. Peter Dow uh, has wrecked the Cornell West campaign in a mere two weeks, going from being on 44 ballots, Green Party 2016, to being on a handful in 2024. The Dow effect is real. The Peter Dow effect is real. I question every single piece of advice that Peter Dow has given Dr. Cornell West. Again, by Compton J here as well. Um, Let's pull this up here. We were learning that having great political analysis does not translate into having great political instincts. The Cornell West campaign has made two recent decisions that has resulted in pushing away supporters. Even I find myself hesitant, hesitant to to even step into the ballot for this 2024 election. Because again, with Peter Dow being named as a campaign manager, that was a gut check for me. The Peter Dow effect is real. Cornel West goes from Ajama uh, and Jill as advisors to Peter DNC Dow. And here's where, again, where we see Dr. Jill Stein breaking. Stein and Baraka wish Dr. West well from support for a strong green campaign. (sighs) Boston, Jill Stein, and Joan Baraka, previously advisors to Dr. Cornel West campaign today, wish Cornell West well in his upcoming independent presidential campaign in the following joint statement. And this is their statement. It's all words. It's one big word salad and it doesn't contribute much. Nor will it. And I have to pull this up here as well. I was focusing on the tweet from Ryan Grimm. Cornell West, after leaving the People's Party, is now leaving the Green Party, pledging to run as an independent. Probably good news for Democrats as he's unlikely to be on the ballot in some states. And here is, of course, the map again of the politicians, uh, or not the po- of, of the ballots uh, that the Greens currently have. And I do want to pull up this interview that Dr. West had on with Tim Black's show, in which he talks about getting on the ballot. And he talks about why he switched from being green to independent. Uh, what what has been more loud is the sentiment that maybe that you've decided to go independent so you would not damage Joe Biden um, uh, oh, because oh. The, the ballot access of the Green Party uh, being, as you stated, 18 different states already, that now as an independent, you got to climb this hill and now you're not really a threat to Joe Biden. What would you say to that critique or that assumption? I would say one is that the Green Party had 18, so we had 32 to go. 32 to go. And, and, and so that was already a uphill battle. That we're going to get at least 35 or 40, and the 35 or 40 are going to be the crucial one. So that the proof is in the pudding. I understand people have a suspicion of that right now, but we got motions, momentum in place for operations where we, we will be able 
in fact, to get a good 30 or 35 rather than the 44 that Sister Jill and Brother Jamo got. And that's still going to be the crucial ones. There's no doubt about it. But on the other hand, people got to keep in mind, it's easy to get on the ballot with independent as opposed to party. No, it's not. No, it's not. In Illinois, it is far, far more difficult. And there are other states that either have the exact same policy as Illinois or maybe just somewhat more lenient. But it is an uphill battle because now what Dr. West will have to deal with is people are going to at least his political opponents can say, well, he left the People's Party. He left the Green Party. He left independent. He's jumping all over the place and not consistent. That is a potential attack and smear that can happen to Dr. Cornell West. And also with the fact that he has Peter Dow as a campaign advisor. Let's just be honest here. Peter Dow does not have a winning record. And I don't want to hear the sob story of, oh, it's very difficult to be a presidential campaign manager. Yeah, it probably is. But you have a losing streak there, buddy. I'm pretty sure if someone really wanted to, they could probably do a far better job than you. And the advice that he's giving him is questionable. So where's Chris Hedges at? Because I know he worked his ass off to try and get uh, Dr. Cornell West into the Green Party to leave the People's Party. But there might have been a lot of problems in the Green Party, more so than uh, we realize. But let's bring this up here. This is, again, Green Party, why is some of your writing in comic stands? Seriously. This, this really annoys me. It's like their, their website is downright embarrassing. So I want to bring up this name here. Margaret Elizabeth, co-chair, one of the many co-chairs to the Green Party. Well, a couple of tweets caught my attention. Most notably, this one. It's fairly surprising that Dr. West would make this decision. It's shocking to me that he did so a few days after I contacted the campaign to try and help Dr. West fix his views about trans people. If you don't support trans rights, you cannot be a green. End of story. Okay, we're going here. See, this is a problem with a lot of progressives and leftists. Many of them won't ever admit it, especially the diehard SJWs. Some of you come off as Puritans, okay? For those of you who don't know who the Puritans are, well, they're the oh-so-fantastic pilgrims. Now, the Puritans were a bunch of a-holes, okay? You couldn't drink. You couldn't smoke. You couldn't watch Shakespeare. Hell, those are the people who canceled Christmas, okay? And this whole idea that the pilgrims were persecuted out, no, that's that's not what happened. People got tired of their shite, and they told them to F off. This whole idea, oh, the pilgrims would be persecuted. No, no, they were the people that just didn't like to have fun. They, Those were the idiots who came up with the idea of work, 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 get closer to the guy. Those pe pilgrims and fun do not mix together. They were the Puritans. And a lot of SJWs on the left come off as Puritans. That interview that Jimmy Dore did with Dr. West was on point. Look, I get it. Identity politics is a thing. But at the end of the day, this election, just to bring it to the 2024 election, whether you choose to participate in it or not, whether you choose to vote or not, this election is going to be about the dollars and the economy. No one cares about identity. It will play a role. But the big issue will be about the economy because Americans are struggling. That's This isn't up, open for a conversation. First place is going to be economy. Second place is going to be economy. Third place is going to be about the goddamn economy. And there's no denying it. Go outside. It costs $300 to go outside. So apparently there might have been an issue with people in the Green Party and the committee. And feeling that maybe Dr. Cornell West didn't care about the issues. Again, uh, right here, this tweet as well. It's not lost upon me that the decision from the West campaign came after many queer members of the party had expressed their disbelief at Dr. West's views towards trans people. Well, what? Is he reading Mein Kampf? Because I don't think he's doing that. He should be quite aware that separate but equal isn't equality or justice and never has been. 
again, a lot of these SJWs, a lot of you people on the, a lot, a lot, a lot of these SJWs, these Puritans on the left, if you don't fit into X, Y, and Z, you're excommunicated just like that. The Dr. Cornell West, really? Really? The overall bet, greens, greens. You do realize that you're struggling to maintain relevance, that people can't take you seriously. I've seen how you guys failed miserably in the state of Illinois and Indiana. I want to focus right back onto this interview that Dr. West is having uh, with uh, Kathleen Collins of CNN. Because the bigger picture is the Green Party is a sinking ship, an epic failure. Let's pull up this video here. You want to be that that example. And you just mentioned what, what you said is the potential for World War III. You know, yeah. you and I have talked about this before with yeah. Russia and NATO the last time you were here. You recently were headlining an event that, that was put on by an anti-war group. But Mother Jones is saying that at that event that there were it was co-sponsored by activists who were known to have worked for, for Russian state media, for um, the Chinese Communist Party, the North Korean regime. I mean, how do you justify no, being on no. stage? Well, Mother Jones, like what a great figure she was. She'd be critical of what's being done in her name. It was sponsored primarily by magnificent brothers and sisters named Code Pink. Medea Benjamin and others who've been critical of oppression across the board. It could be oppression in Russia. It could be oppression of Muslims in China. What we were calling for is a stoppage of the war because we don't want another endless war like Afghanistan and Vietnam. We don't want billions and billions being spent when we don't have money for health care, jobs with a living wage, decent housing, quality education. It's part of the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., right? Yeah. The bombs dropped overseas land in poor and working class communities here because we don't have resources. That was the spirit of that gathering that we had. You've said that this. you're against funding to Ukraine and you've said that you've blamed NATO for, for Russia's invasion, which of course, you know, U.S. officials say that is Kremlin propaganda, Kremlin talking points. You haven't said yet what terms of a ceasefire you would accept. But I don't, I don't blame NATO. I blame the United States using NATO as part of their imperial policy to provoke Russia. But Russia, now, Russia provoked Russia. Russia now, didn't invade a NATO no, country. They Russia invaded is an Ukraine. empire. It's wounded. It's a small empire. It's repressive. Putin himself, of Not course, authority. Well, it's small. It's, the economy is roughly the size of Italy. I mean, it's, it's small compared to the United biggest States. Militaries. I mean, they're not that effective, clearly. Oh, but. No, Russia's got, what, uh, 30 military units around the world. We got 800 around the world. There's no comparison in but that regard. Like what you saw but today, but my point is this, though. Mind. My point is this. We have to be consistent in our critiques of oppression wherever it is. If it's Russian oppression, we're critical of it. It could be oppression in Iran. Vis a vis our precious young Muslim sisters. It could be oppression in Guatemala. It could be oppression in Uganda. We have to be consistent, but we have to take U.S. responsibility. And U.S. responsibility is what? Special operation units over 150 countries, 800 military units in over 85 I'm countries. Just about That's Ukraine world. No, but, but, but NATO, NATO was a particular expression of U.S. power. And it has been from the very beginning, you see. So that, that that doesn't in any way justify the criminal invasion of Putin, but it means when you provoke any nation, I mean, if Russia had missiles in Mexico and Canada, what would be the response of the Democrats and Republicans? I know, I know you've said this blow before. Blow the smithereens. We would blow the smithereens. We disagree on this. That's how empires behave. So. not provoke that invasion. That would okay, well, K Kaylin is above her pay grade. I mean, you know, Dr. West is being nice to her in comparison to Trump. But nonetheless, what can we take from this entire conversation and this revelation of Dr. West running as an independent, non-affiliate? I fear that anything positive from this will soon dissipate and this campaign will fall into being irrelevant. If this is what he was advised to do, then this has been one big nothing burger. Right now, Americans want something different. There is a silent majority that is 50%. 50% of the Americans identify themselves as independent, non-affiliate, non-voters. We want something different. We are looking for leadership. We are looking for somebody 
to break away from the two party system. And that maybe this is a, a problem for humans in general. We look for the mythical leader. We look for that knight on the hill, the person to lead us. And yes, there have been moments numerous times in human history, in ancient empires and in current nation times. Well, you know, modern times, we've seen the few individuals to step up and lead us. But here in America, it's been nothing but mediocre and lackluster these many recent decades in which we have been subservient to a two party system that keeps us in our place. We let fear and corporate media dictate to us what we should think. Dr. West made a critical error in doing this. Running as an independent, yes, there are benefits that come with it. But there are also many other issues that do. I would like there to be a time when, yes, when we abolish all political parties. I want to see that happen. But we're not in that time. And there's not enough people yet to really implement the need for citizen ballot initiatives to call for the abolition of all political parties. We have to get all the states to become citizen ballot initiative states. That is going to be a fight necessary to happen.